Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 243 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, man, uh, let, let me just say my thoughts and prayers with, uh, with Marcus Dibble. Uh, dude's done. He got owned, uh, and uh, looks like man deserves it. Uh, you know, like rest in peace uh, to his career. The dude got... Uh, Done for soliciting children for nudes and pled guilty to it. This calls for a judge. And that has just been reverberating in my brain every time I see a news article about the dude is, Ooh, this calls for a judge. Dun, 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 dun. Um, no, that sucks, man. Uh, and, and fuck that dude. But also... You know, here's my impression of uh, of when the police raided his house looking for child pornography. Get down on the ground. Where are all of your victims? Who? Because he goes, which one? You know, it's, nah, there's something in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, that sucks, man. I uh, look, he wasn't. I, I knew the guy. I wouldn't call him a friend, um, but we definitely worked together five years ago, six years ago, actually. Um, and it's uh, it's a shame because like that video is is I suppose one of the first bigger like videos that went viral on YouTube for me. Um, and it's a shame that uh, you know uh, that that he's in it. Uh, I guess so. I'm. I, I a lot of people have been asking me like, I'm, am I going to take it down? I've decided that I'm probably. I may, I may change my mind. I'm probably not going to take it down. Uh, but I did edit the top comment to just say, yeah, this guy's pled guilty to doing a bunch of heinous things. Uh, so just so you know, definitely disavow the guy. Because I don't, because it, it, it's a, definitely a weird one because it's like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to like, I on one hand, I don't want to leave it up. On the other hand, I don't want to pretend that I never worked with him. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to just pretend that I never did that. Uh, obviously if I knew anything, I would not have worked with the dude or associated with him in any way. There was no, uh, rumor of that happening at all at the time. Um, and, uh, the only reason I'm coming out of get, uh, here and going, yeah, fuck the guy is because he pled guilty to it in court and it's been reported by the news. Um, so yeah, there's, uh, this isn't some fucking canceling a guy based off rumors like i've 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 uh seen a lot of people make them at that mistake and then it turns out that it's not true the guys pled guilty to it in court so yeah fuck you bro see you later and uh i'm not gonna go into it because you know it's just not very it's not very funny the but actually this is kind of funny this calls for a judge that is very funny because he used to say this calls for a muzz and now he's going to prison so there's some there's some humor in that just that one sentence quite funny the scenario and everything else not funny at all this calls for a judge ooh dun, dun 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 that's funny everything else about this sucks um so uh you know thoughts are with whoever was affected by that any victims and and that that's really terrible and it's uh it look man i just ha- i we were going to get one you know, Australia was overdue for one. Do you know what I mean? We were watching a lot of American YouTubers go down for grooming kids. Australia was due for ours, and we got we got one. Um, or two, depending on what side you fall <laughs> on, on, on Twitter, you know, depending on which, which private investigator you believe. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, fuck that guy, and uh, let's... Let's get into it. I've had I've had a great week. Last episode was received very well, despite the f- the first fifteen minutes I spent trashing paramedics. Uh, I was actually surprised that that was received almost overwhelmingly positively. You know, uh, I thought that I was going to get a lot more backlash, but it seems that you know Australia agrees with me. We need to stop liking any paramedics um i even had a few paramedics email me agreeing with me that was the the thing that shocked me the most so quick recap last episode i said uh, that i was uh sick of paramedics getting served before me in the morning at my cafe right because they hadn't started their shift yet if they're on shift totally get it i want my first responders to have as much rest as they can get but if they haven't started their shift and they're on the way to work, nah, that's not fair. So I got this email. Let me just pull it up here. 
from an actual paramedic. Um, here we go. I'll keep them anonymous. Uh, hi, Lewis. My name's Sam. Uh, I'm just uh, wanted to email in. By the way, you can email the show, podcast at lewspears.com, if you uh, have a question for me to answer, if you have any thoughts on the show. Uh, just uh, writing in about your recent take on paramedics. I myself work as a paramedic and would like to offer my point of view. I have to say that you are completely correct. All I do is pick old and fat people up off the floor, pick drunk people up off the street, and be a big taxi with flashing lights for the general populace of idiots on a day-to-day basis. And that's the guy that is is getting coffee before me, is the guy who, when you're like, help, my mother's been stabbed, he goes, oh, another idiot, right? Um... The best part of my day is getting to, getting to skip the long line at cafes to get my fourth legal dose of stimulants for the day to get me through the 12-hour shift and watch people like you dead in the eye as I do so. You can't. See, no remorse and no sympathy for the... No remorse for the, for the victims, me, and no sympathy for the people he's helping, you, okay? So it's, it's just further evidence that... To be a paramedic, you kind of have to be a sociopath, you know? And I'm not knocking it. I think that's a great job for a sociopath. I don't want a guy who's going to have a panic attack when he arrives on the scene. You kind of want the guy who doesn't give a fuck, just picks you up and gets you there, you know? That's what you want in a paramedic. I don't want a compassionate paramedic. I want a guy who's going to load me in the van as quickly as possible, fold up my knees the wrong way if it saves some time, and then arrive there fast. That's all you want. A good driver who's strong. That's a paramedic. Um, But I do, look, I do say this to you, Sam. Stop pushing in the line, you dog. How dare you? So paramedics, owned wrecked guys we've been having a very productive week uh we're working on uh, oh the tour's on sale get your tickets uh get your tickets loosebeers.com i'm going everywhere where the fuck am i going guys if you want to know where i'm going literally check the site because that's that's what i do that's how i run my own life i'm like where the fuck am i touring i check my own website i'm going to ballarat shepparton warnable adelaide hobart launceston perth uh, Gold Coast, Brisbane, Newcastle, Sydney, Geelong, Canberra, and Frankston. Tickets are on sale now for most of those shows. Some of them are on a waiting list, but uh, bear with me. COVID uh, is a thing. So uh, tickets are going crazy, actually, uh, especially for Brisbane. If you're from Brisbane, I would really book now. I've uh, never sold this many tickets in a day uh, to Brisbane before. It's crazy. Those are definitely going to sell out and they're going to sell out well in advance at this pace. So uh, grab your tickets because if you listen to this, I want you at the show. You guys are uh, my favorites. Don't tell the guys on TikTok. Um, we're, we're being very productive. We've been pumping out stand-up clips. I know I haven't been too active on YouTube. The podcast I've been smashing out, but I haven't been too active on YouTube. And that's because we've been really prioritizing these stand-up clips. Literally today, I've got two editors here. I've got Keelan and Devlin's doing a little shift as well. Uh, We're pumping through stand-up clips. We haven't filmed anything. All three of us have just been going through all of the footage from Melbourne and then even my previous tours and just pumping out as many clips as we can. Right now, we're sitting on like 15 and we have plans for like literally hundreds. So uh, by the end of the week, we should have an entire month's worth of borderline daily stand-up clips over on TikTok and Instagram. And then after that, some main channel YouTube clips will be dropping as well. So stay tuned. Uh, We're going to be going fucking ham on this stuff because I've seen what Luke Kidgel's done with his TikTok and I and I'm like man it, it's it's inspiring it's really really cool so I just want to pump out as much stand up as we can and we have some hilarious stuff I hope TikToks I hope the kids on TikTok like the word cunt because it is being imported by me uh and the boys so uh stay tuned for that it's gonna be fucking great what else do we have to talk about here Jeff Bezos has stepped down from Amazon Jeff has stepped down, right? Good on him. I was, didn't I talk about this on a, on a recent episode about when the fuck is he just going to quit and just be a billionaire? Like at what point are you just going to step down and do whatever you want? I'm pretty sure I may have called this like, yeah, Jeff, you don't need to be a CEO. Just be the owner of Amazon and live off your billions. I wonder if it has anything to do with that lizard lady 
You know that that woman that looks like she's made out of a crocodile handbag. Who? What's her? What's her name with the, with the bolt-ons? Uh, I assume her name's Cruella or something. What's her actual name, Keelan? Mackenzie Scott. Isn't that his wife's name? Mackenzie's Mac- the nice lady. I'm talking about his new girlfriend. Yeah, the one the one who looks like uh, like a cheese grater. Lauren Sanchez, and well, that's not a that's kind of an evil name, Lauren Sanchez. Don't, I reckon she's like, I reckon you know what she's done. I think she has sucked the drive out of him, and she's like, "Come on, you don't need to work hard anymore, Jeff. Let let's let's go and buy me a car." I mean, look at her. I'm sh- I mean, I'm sure she's not nice. You know what I mean? Like, I am sure. She, have you, look at her head. She has got her claws into that man and she will not let go. Whereas Mackenzie, his now ex-wife, she's gone and married the bloody school teacher that she used to go uh, and do school teacher interviews. I mean, what a glow up that school teacher's had. That's literally like if I married Bill Gates. I would just go from a guy who could buy a pair of jeans every now and then on that fucking solid jeans money straight up to literally being one of the richest people on the planet because I'm now just fucking... No, that'd be like me fucking Bill Gates' ex-wife and we just get married and all of a sudden I just get plugged into like generational wealth because she thought I was cute at parent-teacher interview day. You know, what a what a fucking king. He must be living it up. Imagine going from a and an also an American teacher's wage too. So what? He'd be on like two dollars a month to just like the smart the 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 most wealthy guy on earth. You could buy the school. I would you know what I would do I would buy the school and then I would turn it into uh just something ridiculous. Like a gladiator pit. And, and every student that I didn't like has to fight for their freedom. That's what I would do with that type of money. That would be sick. And I wouldn't like any of the fucking students. I love that. What a king. But yeah, Jeff Bezos has stepped down. I mean, what? I mean, he should have done that so long ago. What is he going to do? He's just going to space now. I don't understand this like billionaire fucking space race. I don't, I, I really don't get it. It seems like a real, just a dick measuring contest between... Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. Like, why do you want to go to space as like a private company? I get it if you're a government, like you want to you wanna have control of space and you want to show Russia that if we can send a rocket to space, we could send one to your house and it would be a nuke. I understand that. Although maybe that is what Jeff Bezos is trying to do is let the rest of the world know, hey, Next day delivery cunt if you want to nuke at your next at your at your doorstep, you know? Like Amazon's shipping is much better than Australia Post's. Private shipping is a lot faster than the government's. So if if America can nuke, you know, Russia in a few days, Jeff Bezos wanna let, wants to let America know that he could send a laser into, you know, <laughs> he could send a laser into fucking Joe Biden's brain from space in a millisecond. Free shipping. Not that that would make Joe Biden's brain any less efficient, you know? Like, I reckon he could get a... If he got a lobotomy from space, he might become smarter. What were you saying, Keelan? Uh, Bezos will take over as Amazon's executive chairman, which is the biggest shareholder. So he's stepping down as CEO to be the executive chairman. That doesn't make any sense. That's like, oh, I'm retiring to run my business. <laughs> yes, with a focus on innovation. <laughs> oh, so he's just going to do the cool shit, basically. So it's it's basically just a change. Okay, no, no, that makes sense. CEO is like the guy that has to make sure the business makes money and he's in charge of all this and that. I reckon what Jeff Bezos is doing is he's going, look, it's not my fault that the delivery drivers have to shit in plastic bottles and they don't get time off. It's not my fault that if you stop uh, and drop a package and you fall three milliseconds behind on your KPIs, you get taken out the back and thrown into the mincer. That's not my fault. That's the CEO's fault. I'm in charge of rockets and fucking women who look like uh, the Ninja Turtles, you know? 
Like, you know that old live action Ninja Turtles movie where they were in the costumes and they look kind of realistic? You know when they did like the, the second or the third one and they introduced a female Ninja Turtle and she looked exactly like the other Ninja Turtles, but she had tits. That's what his new girlfriend looks like, but evil with angry eyes, you know? I, I am laying into this woman so much and I have no idea what she looks like. You know what? I, I have no, not, no, so I have no idea what type of person she is at all. I just looked at her in like two photos and I've gone, yeah, she's evil. <laughs> and, and maybe that's, maybe she's lovely. Maybe she just has a really bad plastic surgeon. You know, some women get like that where it's like, I think that this does, this doesn't happen to men who get too much plastic surgery. I think the opposite happens to men. I think when women get too much plastic surgery, they just start to look evil. Have you noticed that? Like the really high cheekbones and they can't really smile and their eyes look a hundred years older than their face and, and they just become really shiny like they've got superpowers or something. Women just start to look evil. Like, yeah, like every, like every single real housewife just looks evil. Like they look like, you know what they look like? They look like an evil character uh, from a video game. You know how like uh, like a really good video game with really good graphics, the, the faces, the more animated they start to become, the more evil they kind of look. They, they, they look like almost real and they're so close to mimicking the human face that your human brain goes, ah, this looks off, I can't trust it. That's what women start to look like when they get too much plastic surgery just a little bit soulless and evil. Whereas I think men actually start to look the opposite. Like men who get too much plastic surgery, they start to look like cuddly little harmless soft toys, like plastic vinyl figures, where when their cheekbones get too big and their lips get too big and their chins get too big, they go from looking like kind of a little bit more handsome to just like plastic dolls like chucky you know they look they look so harmless that they they come back around and they look evil again they look like uh what's that goosebumps ventriloquist doll slappy every dude with too much plastic surgery starts to look like slappy from goosebumps google the cover right now and you will laugh every dude who has way too much Cosmetic injections looks like Slappy from Goosebumps. So anyway, can Keelan, can you Google this this woman, his new girlfriend? Is she evil? Or because I have been trashing her and calling her an evil harpy woman for months. And that's based off two photos I've seen where she just looks like you know what she looks like? She looks like you know when you see like a bad mum with a toddler. Who, who isn't doing anything wrong, but, sh but she's just hovering, just waiting to slap it. That's what her and Jeff Bezos look like. Like Jeff's walking around and then, and then just behind him, there's this evil gargoyle with an open hand, ready to smack him on the bald head. No, Jeff, we're not building a rocket to space. We're going to Gucci. No, I'm not going to fuck you anymore. I got the house. You're an incel now. That's the relationship. Because it doesn't matter how many steroids and bicep curls Jeff does. At the end of the day, he's that little nerd in the library that Mackenzie fell in love with. That's why I really hate this woman and Jeff. Because they, they betrayed Mackenzie, who I'm in love with, who I will marry, who I will m bring true joy and happiness to. Mackenzie, if you're watching... Pick me up in the jet. I'll see you at three. This teacher, he's no good for you. What you need is a young, tall Australian man. I will show you true love. Also, is there room on the jet for my girlfriend? We will show you true love. I just want an upgrade. Dude, Keelan, do you know how much money you would get paid if I start fucking Mackenzie? <laughs> a lot. At least... Three dollars a day, at least, and that's you know, you could you could 
afford Amazon Prime with that almost? $3 an hour? Okay. After we get married. And then I'll divorce her. Mackenzie, hope you're not... Uh, I'll, I'll never forget you. I'll never divorce you. Just no prenup. No prenup. Fuck. Can you imagine what happens when Jeff Bezos looks at his new gargoyle handbag girlfriend and goes, oh, I was just... I mean, I was just thinking we, we could get a prenup. Excuse me, bitch. That's, that's absolutely how she speaks to him. What, who is she? What's her name? Lauren Sanchez. News anchor and actress in LA. Right. And now she's just like, a, uh, she, looks like a, she looks like a villain in Grand Theft Auto. That's who she looks like. Absolutely. Michelle from Grand Theft Auto 4. Michelle from Grand Theft Auto 4. Who's that? Michelle GTA 4. Who is that? Oh my God. It's her. I fucking knew I'd seen this bitch before. She's evil. I knew it. I knew she was evil. See, that's why I don't like her because I remember what she did to me. I remember what she did to Nico. Now I need to apologize to this woman. Don't worry. She seems nice, guys. She doesn't. She seems evil. I know it. You wait. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right. Well, maybe that's enough uh, trashing uh, women. I don't know. Like, Jeff, yeah, it really just does seem like Jeff is just, just wants to go, nah, I'm not doing the accounting anymore. I want to build the rockets. Good on him. What a king. Um, I like this story. The prison guard. Prison guard. Dude, a prison guard in America hooked up with a bunch of prisoners. Send, tell me about it, Keelan. What am I, what am I Googling? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Depray, here, I love this headline. Depraved female prison guard sentenced to, for sex with inmate, right? Now, that sounds pretty crazy, right? Oh, a, a female guard had sex with a male inmate. That's fucking crazy, right? But then you read the subject, the subheadline. Depraved corrections officer in California will spend 210 days in prison after she had sex with an inmate. Now, that's crazy. But wait for the rest of the sentence in full view of 11 other inmates. Bro, she had a fucking gangbang in prison. Literally, a lot of those guys would be gang members. That's fucking... Maybe maybe she was trying to bring peace to the prison. Like, if you guys stop fighting, I'll let you watch while he fucks me and then we can take turns if you behave. Maybe it was like... Maybe it was... It was a good thing. This is so good. Oh my God, she's cute. Free her. Queen. You know, you know how, you know how like something, something about the news, every time you see a news of a woman going to prison and then you find out she's hot, you're like, oh, it's not that bad. You know, like that you see that in the comments of every single fucking Twitter headline, whenever like a teacher fucks an underage child, this calls for a judge, right? Every time that happens, now that cunt doesn't have a doc, t- uh, fucking teacher's degree. Um, Every time a female teacher fucks like a child, whether or not she should go to prison is always down to was she hot or not. Apparently, that's what the internet thinks. Whenever I see a headline of like a teacher fucking a male student, I go, yeah, prison. If the student's underage, of course. I'm like, yeah, prison for that. But apparently on Twitter, everyone's like, yeah, let's see if she's hot first, you know? And this chick is hot. So, I mean, she's going to do 210 days in prison. That's not much of a punishment. I mean, that's obviously what she was going to do anyway. You know, she was going to be in prison every fucking day anyway. Now she's just going to be on the other side of the bars. Oh, and in the women's. So I guess, you know, there's no fun for her there. Or maybe she'll have more fun. Season one of... 
Orange is the New Black is based around this very concept of prison guards fucking the... Right. So this must be a common thing, I guess. If a TV show is inventing a scenario and then a few few years later it just happens, or maybe, maybe she watched Orange is the New Black and then got a job in prison. Maybe she watched that TV series and it unlocked some fetish in her mind. You know when you when you discover a thing that you're into that you had no idea you were into until you see it on TV or, you, or, or something happens and you're like, fuck, I didn't know I liked that. And your brain's like, that's sick. Maybe that's what happened with her. You know, she saw the, a, a prison gangbang on Orange is the New Black. I don't know, never seen it. And she's like, fuck. <laughs> I gotta, how do I get that job? Fresno County's jail, Tina Gonzalez was sentenced for the act, as well as for providing the inmate with drugs and a mobile phone. Man, that's fucked. The 26-year-old also allegedly gave the inmate razor blades and critical jail intelligence. So she told him when his cell would be searched so he could keep the weapons? Yeah, fuck that. That's crazy. The gangbang in full view of the other inmates, I'm all for, but t- giving the guy razor blades and telling him how to hide it? That's not good. <coughs> COVID. Um, Fresno County Assistant Sheriff Steve McComas accused her of putting her fellow correctional officers at risk, betraying her oath, and behaving in some of the most disgraceful ways he'd seen and heard in 26 years in the sheriff's office. Well, so he he heard it from all the way down, from all the way in the warden's office. He heard it going on. Holy fuck. This is a quote from uh, the the county assistant sheriff. Cutting a hole in your pants to make it easier to have sex with an inmate and having intercourse in full view of 11 other inmates is something only a depraved mind could come up with. She kind of looks like Pokemon. A little bit. Not fully, just a little bit. This is the, the craziest thing. Cutting a hole in your pants and having sex with an inmate in front of 11 other inmates who snitched... Come on, who snitched? Who ruined it for the boys? Come on, fellas, who snitched? It wouldn't have been her. Who told? Someone who didn't get a turn. See, that's what happens when you don't share. It would have been it would have been someone, maybe maybe one of the short guys that was standing at the back. They didn't let him stand at the front. He was like, fuck this. If I can't see it, no one gets to fuck her. She has shown no remorse. She continually calls, has sexually explicit conversations with the inmate in question and even boasts about the crime she carried out. It shows that she's incapable of owning up to her mistakes and will undoubtedly continue in the future. I mean, that's awesome. Good on her. Like, that's the only type of criminal I respect is someone who goes, we gotcha. And they're like, yeah, I mean, I'm going to continue doing it in prison, you know? That's so it sounds like what's going to happen now is she's going to try and break out of prison so that she can break into the male prison and keep fucking. You know what? You know what she needs to do? This is what she needs to do. If she really wants to live out her dream, because, you know, if she got caught and then she never did it again, she showed some remorse, you know, obviously, whatever, she's learned her lesson. But considering that it seems like she was, she's all for it, she's been caught. And she's called the inmate and bragged about it to other people. So she's all for it. She's learned nothing. So my advice to this woman is to transition their gender, become male, make it into the male prison system, join a gang that your boyfriend's in so you get moved from that prison to his prison for your safety because they keep the gangs together so there's not fighting. And then fuck the snitch so it doesn't happen again and then live your dreams out for the rest of your life in prison. You might have to kill a few people so you get that life sentence, but still, it seems like you're living your dream. I think that's what she should do. And now she'll be happy and they'll live happily ever after. (laughs) I think what you did was terrible, stupid. This is the judge. This is the judge. 
I think what you did was terrible and stupid. You've ruined your career. You endangered your fellow officers. But I also believe that people can redeem themselves. You have the rest of your life to prove that. That's sick. Good on it. You know, that's a hot girl summer. That's the hot girl summer that we keep hearing about. It's stuff when I see like stuff like chicks doing this, it always brings me back to uh, this idea of choice feminism, which is an interesting idea. It's an idea, uh, it's a feminist idea of like anything a woman chooses to do is a feminist act, right? So obviously, you know, sometimes other women, women will shame other women for being strippers or for sexualizing themselves. The idea of choice feminism is if a woman chose to do it, that is a feminist act. And I, in this scenario, am fully behind choice feminism. And I think that this woman is a freedom fighter. Well, she's not really a freedom fighter. She is fucking prison inmates. You know what she is? She's an, she's an inmate fucker. She's not doing any fighting and there's no freedom involved. She is an inmate fucker. And that's feminism. And I think she's an icon and I stand up for her right to fight and fuck for equality. Good on her. Queen. What's her name? Uh, Tina Gonzalez. Good on you, Tina. Maybe... I mean, fuck, if she's bi, she's going to have the best time ever in a, in a female prison. It seems to, to me like it was the prison aspect. What a queen. Orange is, in the, is the new black. The writers will be reading this shit and going, fuck, how do we come up with something crazier than that? You know? Queen. What a queen. Mackenzie? Sorry, I'm in love with Tina now. All right, now for this part, just before we get into uh, miscellaneous bit at the end, it's time to talk, Keelan has a video to show me, but before that, I want to tell you about manscaped.com. Guys, manscaped.com, use code, what's my code? Spears, for 20% off and free shipping, the best pube razor in the game. Get it. Honestly, great. I shave my pubes all the time. Every time I go and stand on the runway at Tullamarine, just hoping for Mackenzie's private jet to pick me and my girlfriend up, guess how we prepared our privates? That's right, Manscaped. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The best ball bag pussy head trimmer in the game. Makes you look real nice. Tina would love it. And so would 10 of the inmates. One of them is a snitch. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping the manscaped.com razor. Now, I talked about Britney Spears last episode. Or no, I talked about it on Patreon. Uh, the whole Brit Britney Spears, the, the Sunday supplement. I talked about it there. That is on Patreon if you want to go and watch it. Um, but Keelan has sent me this video of Wendy Williams talking about Britney Spears and her family. Now, uh, Britney Spears' family... Uh, have uh, initiated conservatorship, which basically they've gone to the judge. This bitch is crazy. And the only way we can help her is if you give me access to her bank account so I can buy a Rolex. And Brittany can't make any of her own decisions. She has an eye, uh, an eye, uh, eye, uh, what is it? Oh, I'm glad that you corrected me there because I was going to say, uh, I was going to say a fucking IED, an improvised explosive <laughs> device. Fuck, imagine if she had one of those implanted in her. Like some, some fucking massive landmine that was made with a car battery and some nails just implanted in her arm. And if she doesn't speak, if she doesn't sing toxic, it explodes. <laughs> That'd be crazy. But she has an IUD in her arm, so she can't get pregnant. And that's fucked. Terrible. Save Britney. Leave Britney alone. This calls for a judge. To have another ruling on that. I want an appeal. Dude, that's going to be my the new catchphrase of this podcast. This calls for a judge. Ooh. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Fuck. 
I mean, what am I, what am I supposed to do? Not make jokes about the, the fucking, this calls for a Muzz guy grooming kids. Didn't he make a bunch of videos about photographers, the acting creepy? Fuck, it really is that thing of like projection. Like whatever you criticize, if you criticize something too much, there's a chance that that might be you. Like maybe I'm a paramedic and I had no idea. You know, maybe I am a paramedic. Has anyone checked how long it takes me to get my coffee at the fucking <laughs> shop, you know? But anyway, Wendy Williams, the, the talk show host who loves to fart on air. <laughs> uh, Keelan has sent me this video. <laughs> you know, she kind of looks like one of those lizard women that I've been talking about. She's one who's had so much plastic surgery that she started to look a bit evil. But anyway, this is what she has to say about the Britney Spears situation. How dare you, Mr. Spears? You had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears. Death to all of them. Oh. What? Even the audience seemed to think Wendy Williams. Death? Come on, Wendy, what did I do to you? Come on, bitch, death? What do you mean, death to Mrs. Spears? What did my mum do? What are you bringing mum into this for? Come on, my my dad, he's just a builder. Sometimes he makes guitars. What's the issue? How dare you, Mr. Spears? You had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears. Death to all of them. Oh. <laughs> what is she, some kind of... Is she in the fucking Taliban? <laughs> and death to Mr. Spears. Death <laughs> to all of them. Oh. I love how... Wendy just got so wrapped up in how much she hates the Spears family that even the audience was shocked. Look at her face when she's, when the audience, like what was she expecting from the audience? She's calling for the death of people on TV. What did she expect from the audience? Like for all of them to stand up, put on balaclavas and shoot AK-47 into the air? Is that what she wanted? Look at her face when when the audience just is shocked. She is shocked. I don't know if she's shocked at the audience's reaction or what else, or if she's also shocked at what she How said. How dare you, Mr. Spears? You had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears. Death to all of them. Oh, Jesus. Even the audience seemed to think Wendy Williams. You can literally hear one guy go, Jesus. What the fuck, Wendy? I I came I thought I was I thought I was gonna win like a gift package or something. Instead, I'm, I'm, I'm part of death to Mr. and Mrs. Spears. One, you know what? That was, you know what? That guy who went, Jesus, this dude. Oh, Even the audience. He, when he goes, Jesus, he just realized that he wasn't at Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> He's like, Jesus, she's black. I thought I was at fucking Ellen DeGeneres. I thought it smelled different. That's why she's so shocked. She just shit herself. <laughs> he goes... Death to Mrs. Spears. No, oh, no, I've shit myself. <laughs> she just. Oh, fuck. Oh, man. That's so funny. This calls for a diaper. Ooh. That's so funny. I want that. I want that to be my ringtone. Death to you, Mr. Spears. How dare you, Mr. Spears? You had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears. Death to all of them. Oh, what? <laughs> Even the audience. <laughs> what kind of reaction did she think she was going to get by going death to all of them on fucking national TV? I wouldn't even do that on this fucking show. Death? I mean, Lee, it's pretty fucked. But I wouldn't, I don't want them killed, you know? Like, she, I, I know, I guarantee you she didn't say that when 9 11 happened, you know? Like, 9 11 happened and Wendy Williams would be like, oh, this is pretty bad. This sucks. But all of a sudden, Britney Spears can't drive a Lamborghini anymore and she's like, death to you, Mrs. Spears. Leave my mother alone. <laughs> Leave her out of this, Wendy. Oh, fuck. Do you know Wendy Gillen? Wendy's nuts? Hey. Ooh. Um, all right, guys. It's time. 
before we start the Patreon version part of the podcast, let's do. I got one email. Let's do. Let's do miscellaneous bit at the end, guys. Uh, I've got one more email about paramedics, and then I'm going to end it because Wendy Williams wants me to. You know, obviously, death. Um, uh, paramedics put down grandma. This one's uh, from. Uh, hey, Lewis, I love your stuff. Oh fuck. <laughs> You're going to have to edit that, Gillen. No, the other guy I called Sam. That wasn't his name. This guy's name... This guy I'll be calling James. But you must censor that. Okay. Uh, Hey, write that down. (laughs) Hey, Lewis, love your stuff. Call me James, everyone. His name is James. Welcome to the show, James. Not the other name I did not say. uh, Because I've just realized that we have to censor that because this sounds... Very illegal. A few years back, I dated this girl. Her dad was a paramedic and her uncle was a doctor. I went to a family dinner for Christmas one year where they were all openly talking and laughing about how when my girlfriend's grandma got too old, they nicked some drugs from the back of the ambulance and euthanized her. (laughs) If paramedics aren't working or trying to kill grandma, then back of the coffee shop line. That's right. Keep up the good work. Hope you have a shitter one than my ex-girlfriend's grandma. That's a bit heavy, you know, but also quite resourceful, you know? I mean, look, that is uh, that is what happens when euthanasia is illegal. You know, that's when people start nicking stuff out of the back of the ambulance and going, death to you, grandma, and you, Mrs. Spears. Well, that email was really sad, so we're moving on. Uh, What else do we have here? No, that's it. That's all I have. That's all I've got. Guys. I Okay. How about I end it on this? (laughs) This better work. Or the episode's ending on a low note. This calls for a judge. Ooh. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. That's the end of the episode. I'm going to continue on Patreon. If you want to uh, listen to that, uh, you get early access. Uh, you get access to the Discord and a bunch of Patreon-only episodes where we have a lot more fun than we do here, even though uh, what we do here is probably a bit reckless. Uh, thank you very much. I'll see you on tour. It starts in August, uh, so grab your tickets now. Loosespears.com. Once again, I am coming to Ballarat, Shepherd and Warnable, Adelaide, Hobart, Launceston, Perth, Gold Coast, Brisbane, Newcastle, Sydney, Geelong, Canberra and Frankston. Get your tickets now. Loosespears.com, especially if you're from Brisbane or any of those. Brisbane and Perth, actually. Move quick. You can't because they are going to go fast. They're smaller COVID safe shows. So, you know the drill. Get your tickets or you will miss out and uh death to mr spears and mrs spears while we're at it bye have a shit one